We were driving the other day and on the side of the road I saw a trash can full of these beautiful white chippy boards so you know I had to stop and pick some up. I picked out the straightest ones and now I am cutting them down into several different lengths. Now that I've cut these down, I've got a pile here. I'm gonna turn into some decor boards and a pile over here, I'm going to turn into some risers. I have saved one piece also to cut into wooden rounds. First, let's cut out a few decor boards. I'm going to be using my jigsaw and I start with my handle. I freehand my handles. If you wanted to trace a line on here and make a certain shape, that's totally up to you, but I have gotten pretty good after cutting out so many over the past few years. After I cut one side of the handle, I pick up that piece of wood that has fallen and mirror it on the other side of the board. That way, when I trace this side of my handle, they will match perfectly. After I have the handles cut out, I usually notch off the bottoms of the board just to round them out a bit. Since I have all of my tools out and I've made one board, I might as well make a few more. Notice there's a few pieces of wood that have some blue tape around them. That board had split in half, so I ran some Gorilla wood glue down the middle and glued them back together. Once my boards are all cut out, I do give them a sanding before taking them inside using some 60 grit sandpaper. Once the glue is dry, I have brought the boards inside to make some faux repairs. I have a salvaged piece of metal from an old project. I'm going to flatten it out and use some metal shears to cut several ovals. Using a nail and a hammer, I'm poking a hole through the metal. It's not very thick, so this is pretty easy. And that also starts a little pilot hole down into my wood. And then I just used a screw and secured all of the faux repairs onto the boards. Here's a peek at the final project. What a beautiful high-end look to add into your decor. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the faux repairs on these boards. You'll be able to find all of my flips and finds over at my website, upcycledbybree.com, and I'll be sure to drop that down in the description box below for you as well. Next up are a few risers. These have been selling really well for me with the salvaged wood tops. So I actually have an old vintage set of corn stabbers or corn on the cob holders, whatever you call them. I call them stabbers. And I'm just pulling out the nails with my nail puller and these turn into the most perfect little tray feet. I'm also smoothing out the edges of these risers before I assemble them. Again, I've just got some 60 grit sandpaper here on my orbital sander. Using Gorilla Wood Glue, I have set all of the little feet and riser bottoms onto the tops of the wood. Let them dry out in the sun for about 30 minutes or so, so they are secure. Now I'll flip them over and use my pneumatic nail gun to secure them permanently onto my salvaged wood. Since these risers have a very rustic feel, I'm not too worried about even filling the nail holes. I'm just taking a little bit of white wax by DIY Paint and placing it down into that hole to kind of help it blend. Drop me a comment and let me know what you think about these risers. I love the ones with the shorter wide feet. Those came off of an old piece of furniture that was falling apart, but I did salvage the bases for these trays. And the adorable little corn stabbers came out great as well. Let me know which one is your favorite style down in the comments section below. I'm 
I'm tracing around this old lid to get some circles on this fence board here. This one is a little bit warped, but that's okay. It's going to make some really fun rustic pieces. If you don't want your wood to be bent, make sure you're picking out a straight fence board for these wood rounds. I use a jigsaw to cut out a lot of my wood projects. There's definitely some other power tools you could use to get these rounds if you want them even more perfect. I'm sanding down the edges of these as well. Again, I've got 60 grit sandpaper to help smooth out those rough cuts. For the first few rounds, I am using a little bit of my wood glue and attaching them to these pieces of salvage wood. I cut off an old bed frame. These are going to make some really large rustic candlesticks. I absolutely love the way this wood looks with the chippy white salvaged rounds i didn't even do anything extra to these i thought about adding some white wax but i'm just loving the warm wood and the white salvaged wood together drop me a comment down below what do you think about my very rustic candlesticks place one under this upcycled cloche which is just an old photo folder i love to thrift these and turn them into these mini cloche for these salvaged wall pockets i decided to use some metal items i had out in my stash to create a fun unique piece of decor i'm simply attaching them using combination of wood glue and screws basket I added a bird cage and a couple eggs how adorable for all seasons even inside the metal clamp I just placed some floral that could easily be taken out and switched each season and on the third one the doorknob salvage was not really doing much for me so I replaced it with this cast iron hook there's a lot of room underneath though so I'm using one of my redesign with Prima transfers this is the magnolias just going to place that in the empty space and then I will seal it up with a little bit of DIY big top I'll simply remove the plastic off of the paper backing and place it where I would like it on my project. Once I have it placed, I'll take the enclosed rubbing stick and rub down across the image. That will transfer the image from the plastic onto my wood. Once the image is transferring, I can then begin to lift my plastic up, revealing my project. Isn't this such a beautiful transfer? I think it is one of my favorites. My DIY big top will give a nice protection over the transfer just in case somebody wants to hang something off the hook and it rubs across the transfer. It won't scratch the image up. I did not do any distressing on this transfer. The big top is a nice durable top coat and it does have a little bit of a sheen to it. It will make this very pretty. I noticed one more of the boards had quite a natural split down it, but it wasn't actually broken. It just looked like a split. So I took some of these little pieces of leather strapping and screwed them on to make more faux repairs on this board. I'll occasionally add holes to the top of the board so they can be hung up as well. Here I'm just using a wood drill bit. It's a little bit bigger than a regular drill bit and easier to get through this wood. I'd love to know which one of today's projects is your favorite. Please drop me a comment down below. And if you haven't yet, be sure to follow and subscribe so you don't miss any new projects. If you've got a friend who you think would love these fence board flips, please send it over to them. That'll help my channel continue to grow. All of my finds and flips and the products I use can be found upcycledbybrie.com, which is all linked down in the description box below. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye, friends.